Hey, it's Ivan from the AB Stock Channel here. Tesla and AB sales numbers are in for 2020. Fascinating trends starting to develop. Can't wait to show you guys. So let's jump straight into it. But before we do, thank you to all the Patreons that make these episodes possible. And remember, all content here is opinion only and not financial advice. Starting off with Tesla reporting that they sold about half a million vehicles in 2020, which was an incredible achievement in a year that featured a pandemic and a temporary shutdown to both the Shanghai and Fremont factories. And despite the challenges, Tesla still grew deliveries by 34% compared to global new vehicle sales, which fell by 28.5% over the same time period. One of the key growth engines for Tesla in 2020 was China. In December, Tesla reported another new record delivering 23.8 thousand Model 3s, which if you extrapolate those numbers over 12 months, it comes out to 285,000. So can Tesla push even higher monthly Model 3 sales, or will the Model Y cannibalize any of the Model 3 sales? This will be interesting to see in 2021. And speaking of the Model Y, Tesla has officially started deliveries on January 19th. So a huge year in China coming up and I look forward to tracking how fast they can ramp production in the coming months. Demand will be no problem as they have already pre-sold all of Q1 production in just days. And have a look at this. In 2019, sales of the Fremont made Model 3. And in 2020, look at the growth in sales with local production. This is super important to keep in mind going forward, as I expect to see similar sales of growth in Europe once Giga Berlin comes online. Finally for China, the Tesla Model 3 was the top selling EV and took 11% of the Chinese EV market share while the Huang Guang Mini comes in second place, but remember, it sells for around 5,000 US dollars. And for the Neo fans, the ES6 comes in ninth place, with just over 28,000 sales, which is almost the amount Tesla sold in December alone. In other news from Asia, Japan has announced that it will ban the sale of gas-powered vehicles by 2035 which seems to have angered Toyota for some reason. Not sure why, I mean, 2035 is in 14 years. Anyways, moving on to Europe, in which Tesla delivered 31,000 Model 3s in Q4. In the UK, Tesla set another record with 7,000 quarterly deliveries of the Model 3 in Q4, while in December, 23.4% of all new cars sold in the UK were electric, up 6.6% from December of 2019. And it's not as if the whole new vehicle market is booming and EVs are just coming along for the ride. No, new car sales in the UK were down 30% in 2020. Not to mention, in the UK, a survey was done in which 91% of EV drivers stated that they would not go back to a nice vehicle. As for the 9% that would, well, time is running out as the UK will ban diesel and petrol cars by 2030. So the UK is showing very strong demand for electric vehicles. And it's no surprise we're seeing increased rumors of Tesla eyeing the UK as a source of a second European gigafactory. Now, moving on to Germany, and we can see that Q4 was a very strong quarter for Model 3 deliveries. And check this out, 26% of all new vehicles sold in Germany were EVs. This is pretty incredible, a jump from 3.7% at the same time last year. Imagine being a company selling only ICE vehicles and looking at these numbers and a huge chunk of your revenue is gone and most likely not coming back. I mean, if this is not a wake up call, I don't know what would be. Here we can see market shares of EVs in Germany. And this is where some of our favorite Tesla bears have tried to cherry pick data to try whip up some phony bearish case for Tesla. They will say Volkswagen's market share has gone from 13 to 24%, while Tesla has gone from 17 to 9%. So with increased competition, Tesla is losing out in Europe. 
Now, unfortunately for them, and anyone that would believe them is, Tesla has increased the amount of Model 3s that they have delivered into the German market by 68.5% in 2020. And to get a deeper insight into the German market, we have Nicholas, who is a friend of the channel and based in Germany. So Nicholas, what else has been happening in Germany? Hi guys, I've seen Ivan's video so far, the German car market's in a big change. The companies have to reach their CO2 goals or pay a lot of penalties to the German government. So now big brands like BMW, Volkswagen, Mercedes and Audi have to push their EVs and plug-in hybrids to the markets to lower their CO2 consumption. On the other side, Tesla hired a lot of engineers from Mercedes and some other brands. The German in general is very old-fashioned and don't want new technology very fast. They also have one of the biggest and strongest brand loyalties in the world. Most young Germans just want to buy a German premium car like BMW, Audi or Mercedes. Also, many people stick to Volkswagen, like they stick to the Golf 1 to Golf 8, and now buy an ID3 instead of a Tesla Model 3, even if the Model 3 seems to be the better deal for them, just because the brand loyalty is such high. So have a nice day. Awesome. Thank you for that report, Nicholas. And you're right, it will be interesting to see how Tesla's brand evolves in Germany. Now moving on to France, in which Tesla delivered 1400 Model 3s in Q4, while the Renault Zoe and the Peugeot 208 dominated the French EV market. And here, I'm curious to why this is the case. When we look at the French EV market as a whole, we can see that EVs made up 19.2% of all new vehicles sold, compared to 3.4% at the same time last year. So whichever market you look at in Europe, EVs are absolutely taking off. And speaking of a market that has already seen wide-scale adoption of EVs, let's have a look at Norway. Tesla had their second best quarter since Q1 of 2019. So again, to all the short sellers that have tried to make the point that demand has dried up in Norway, well, wrong again. The Tesla Model 3 was the second best selling EV in Norway behind the Audi e-tron. And look at the Norwegian market as a whole. 87% of new cars were electric in the month of December. And in 2020, Norway made history by selling more EVs than gas-powered vehicles. And in my opinion, this is what the future holds for all countries. Another country with strong Model 3 Q4 deliveries was the Netherlands, with 8.3 thousand deliveries. When we compare sales of EVs in the Netherlands, the Model 3 came in second place to the Volkswagen ID3. And if you thought Norway was an outlier in terms of selling a high percentage of new electric vehicles, check this out. 78% of all new vehicles sold in December were EVs. And look at the growth on an average year-by-year -year basis. Moving on, here are some other markets in which Tesla set record for Model 3 deliveries. Switzerland. Italy. Denmark. And Austria. To wrap things up for Europe, the Model 3 was the second best selling EV in Europe behind the Renault Zoe, an incredible achievement considering the Berlin Gigafactory has not yet come online, and once it does, I can't wait to see how the Model Y will perform in Europe. As for the Model 3, well, let's just say the price of the vehicle has just been slashed by 9%, which will only further increase demand. The final market we're going to be covering today is Australia, which is absolutely nowhere in terms of EV adoption. The one ray of light is that since 2018, EV sales are starting to tick upwards, and that's primarily due to the introduction of the Tesla Model 3. And Tesla has 50% market share of all EVs sold in Australia. The thing that is still holding back Tesla in Australia is price, with a standard range Model 3 selling for 73,000 Australian dollars, compared to the average price of a new car, which is around 40,000. Now, when it comes to the US, I haven't been able to get any accurate sales data, and from what I have seen, the numbers seem to vary wildly from one source to another. So if you guys know of any places to get this data, please let me know. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I've taken a lot of time to make this as visual as possible, but it's always worth it and I absolutely love putting these sales episodes together. So that's all for now. If you like the content and want to support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do so. And until next time, I'll see you guys soon.